Okay, I want to talk about the top 10 games of 2024, the top 10 Big Sky games of 2024, in no particular order, but these are what I believe are some of the top games happening in the Big Sky in 2024. Games to be paid attention to, games that have playoff implications, games that, you know, could have big time ramifications all the way around. Um, a lot of good players in the Big Sky, like I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, and these are some of the top games um, that I'm paying attention to, that I will definitely be paying attention to, and I know the rest of the Big Sky fans will be paying attention to as well. At number one, remember, this is not in any particular order. I'm just naming off my 10. At number one, obviously, Montana versus Montana State on November 23rd, the last game of the season. The Brawl of the Wild could have playoff and Big Sky implications similar to last year. Um, whoever won that game was basically going to win the Big Sky. Montana ended up winning that game. Montana won the Big Sky. Montana ended up being, I think, a two seed for the playoffs. Um, really, was that's something that helped them get to the FCS National Championship. Um, you know, I think Montana was a really good squad last year, but I think, you know, they had a really, I mean, I don't even want to say they had a really good draw because they played a really good Furman squad. They played a really, really good North Dakota State North Dakota State squad. They would have had to play Montana State again had they beat North Dakota State. Um, and then they played Delaware in the first or second round, whenever that was. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm very excited about that game. Obviously, like I said, Montana State, Montana versus Montana State had playoff implications last year and it had um, big sky implications. So um, that could potentially be the case this year. I think Montana State will be a really good outfit this year. Um, I think Montana will be a really good outfit as well. So that's the first game to watch. Obviously, everybody in the big sky, if you follow the big sky, you know that's a game to watch. That's a game to pay attention to. That's a game to keep your eyes on. Number two, Idaho at Montana State on ESPN2 in october october 12th um that's going to be a really really big time game on national television idaho at montana state montana state went to idaho last year um had some kicking struggles um idaho was able to come out with the win i can't remember exactly the final score i know it was a i know it was a close game but i remember um you know that, that was a devastating loss for montana state really really good game if you paid attention to you know it was a really good game Idaho had a really good squad last year. A lot of people thought Idaho was honestly going to do a little better last year, I think. They had a really good running back, really good receiving core, obviously a really good quarterback. I think their offensive line was pretty solid. Their defense was pretty good. I mean, I think Idaho was pretty good last year. They weren't able to finish the job. But that's the number two game on ESPN2, one of two Big Sky games airing on ESPN2 um, during the regular season next year. So Idaho at Montana State, that's the number two game to watch for in 2024. At number three, we have UC Davis at Montana on ESPN2, the second of two nationally televised Big Sky games on November 9th. UC Davis is coming to Montana to play Montana. Um, that's going to be a really exciting game. Lan Larison, um, I, I can't remember if Lan Larison had played when they played Montana last year. I know he got hurt later in the season. I know Montana and uh, UC Davis had played kind of later in the season, but I know that's a big time game on both schedules for Montana and UC Davis. Um, Montana gets UC Davis at home. I can't remember the last time UC Davis came to Montana. I don't remember if they played in 2022. I don't remember if they played in 2023 or they did play in 2023, but they played at UC Davis. I don't think they played in 2022. I don't remember. We did not play them in 2021. Um, 2020, nobody played 2019. We did play them at uc davis and beat them that was actually one of the bigger games in 2019 no yeah 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 that was one of the bigger games in 2019 because they were pretty highly ranked um montana came in there us montana came in there and was able to get a dub but um that's a really good game really big time game on nationally tele national television i can't remember the last i think the obviously they montana had a game on espn2 um during the playoffs ndsu um, I can't remember if Furman was on ESPN2, but I remember Eastern Washington in 2021 was on ESPN2 as well. Um, UC Davis at Montana is on ESPN2, a regular season game, and Wa Grizz on national television. I think that's going to be very exciting. Going to be some great exposure for Montana and UC Davis. Going to be some great exposure for the Wa Grizz fans and that stadium. Um, it's going to be a really, really great time to be a Big Sky fan. That's number three on the list. Number four, Idaho at UC Davis, September 28th. Um, Idaho, one interesting tidbit for Idaho, they play, Idaho plays four of their first five on the road, including this UC Davis date. Now, I honestly don't know, and I didn't mention this when I mentioned Idaho at Montana State. I don't know how good Idaho will be this year. Like I mentioned, they lost a lot. 
um, through the transfer portal, their number one quarterback, their number one running back, their number one receiver to the draft, their running back and quarterback through the transfer portal. They lost their defensive back. I think their number one defensive back left in the transfer portal. So they lost a lot. Um, obviously, Jason Eck is a hell of a coach. So um, I think he'll be able to get the boys going. But how... How much will he be able to get the guys going? How that that's gonna be a really exciting game. Really exciting game. Idaho at UC Davis. Idaho going to California, going to Davis, California to play UC Davis. Um, I honestly would lean towards UC Davis in that game, just given who both teams are returning. But I think Idaho could shock a lot of people. Like I said, I think Jason Eck is a really good coach. That is the number four game to watch in 2024 in the Big Sky. Number five, Montana State at Eastern Washington. Now I don't know if I would say Eastern Washington and Montana State is like an established rivalry game. Um, Montana State beat the brakes off of Eastern Washington last year. I think they put up like 50 on Eastern Washington potentially last year. But um, I think that could be a potentially good game. I think their young quarterback, Kiko Avisperis, is going to be a very good player this year. Um, he, he he had some up and down play last year. I think he can throw it all over the place. Obviously, that Eastern Washington offense, offense they like to air the ball out. Eastern has some good receivers, Efton Chisholm, um, Nolan Ulm, a couple good players for Eastern Washington on the outside at the receiver position with the, to go with Kikoa Visperis. Um, I think that could be a really good game. Um, I could see Eastern Washington winning that. I could see Montana State winning that. Like I said, I think Montana State's going to be one of the better teams in the Big Sky this year. But Eastern Washington, if they're able to get things figured out on the defensive side of things, I think they could be a good outfit in 2024 as well. So um, that's a game to pay attention to. That game will be played in November towards the end of the season, November 2nd. That is number five. Number six on the list is UC Dave. Excuse me, gosh, is UC Davis at Sac State. Rivalry game to end the season could have huge playoff implications, could have huge Big Sky implications, potentially depending on where those um, schools fall in the Big Sky when that game is played. That game is also played the same weekend as the Brawl of the Wild, November 23rd, last game of the season. Big time game. It's a rivalry game. They're like, I don't know what the distance. They're very close together. SAC and, UC and Davis, California are very close schools. Um, Going to be a big time game. Going to be a big time game. Land Larison, Caden Bennett. Some of the two top players for each of those schools. Um, I'll be paying attention to that game. Um, obviously, the Brawl of the Wild will have a lot of people's attention. But that game as well will have my attention. Because like I said, it could have playoff and Big Sky implications similar to the Brawl of the Wild. So that is number six on the list. At number seven, we got Sac State at Montana State. Sac State going to Montana State to play um, on November 9th. Another game towards the end of the season. Um, a lot of these big time games get played in November. You got UC Davis at Montana in November, Montana, Montana State in November. You got Montana State at Eastern Washington in November, UC Davis at Sac State in November, Sac State, Montana State in November. Um, big time game for Sac State. I'm not so sure what I think about Sac State so far right now. Um, they lost a really good linebacker, an all conference linebacker. They lost one of their receivers. They lost an all conference tight end. And uh, Terra, was it not Terra? Have I been calling him? Yeah, Terrace Marshall. Not Terrace Marshall. Why am I? Why do I feel like I'm blanking on his name? Marshall. His name is Marshall. Marshall, I'm forgetting his first his first name. I think a couple of videos ago, I actually called him Terrace Marshall. Terrace Marshall is the receiver from LSU. Marshall. I'm blanking on his name. I have to look it up now. I have to look it up now. Please give me a second. Marshall Martin. Marshall Martin. Marshall Martin, the tight end from Sacramento State. Um, number 16, really, really good player. Got signed to, I think, the Jets um, following the draft. Really, really good player, big time player for um, big time player for Sac State last year. He's no longer there, um, but Sac State at Montana State, um, I think that could be a really big game in November. That one could also, you know, obviously all games have playoff and Big Sky implications, but definitely towards the end of the season of those last two, three weeks, those games play big time for playoff standing. So um, that's a game that I will have my eye on. That it was number seven. At number eight, we got Weber State. At Montana, Weber State coming into Wa Grizz to play the Grizz. Um, that game will be played in October towards the mid mid part of the season. Um, Weber State did not have a great season last year. They lost their um, head coach a couple of years ago, Jay Hill. Um, he had a winning culture. He had set the culture at Weber State. They 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 everybody knew that Weber State was going to be in the running every year when Jay Hill was the head coach. You understood that they were going to have great players. You understood that they were going to play the right way. You understood that they weren't going to make a lot of mistakes. You understood that they were going to play hard from first down from the first snap to the last snap. Um, that's what you could expect from from uh, Weber State. They come to Montana to play Montana. The Grizz, I think, are going to be a formidable opponent this year. 
but I think Weber State could potentially shock some people. They lost some pieces. Everybody, it, it, I keep saying teams lose people, but like every school is losing people in the transfer portal th these days, so um, that's not really a surprise. But look for that to be another game to pay attention to, to have your eyes on in October towards the mid part of the season. That was number eight. At number nine, we have Weber State at Idaho. Weber State going to Idaho to play. Weber State has Weber State has multiple tough games on the road this season. Um, definitely towards the second half, back half of the season, Weber State has some tougher games. But um, yeah, Weber State at Idaho. That is a really, really big time game. Really, really big time game in November, later in the season, the second to last week of the season, playing at Idaho in the Kippy Dome. Um, like I said, I don't really know what to expect from either of these squads. Idaho, I think they have a really good quarterback in uh, Lane. I think he's going to be a good player. I think he showed really well against Idaho State. I don't have, I don't think very highly of that Idaho. The Idaho State had some really good receivers last year, but defensively they weren't a very strong squad. But Really good for a freshman to come in and play the way he did. Played really well. So hopefully he's able to capitalize off that and bring that into the 2024 season. I believe he's going to be their guy this year unless they brought somebody through the transfer portal. But Weber State at Idaho. Weber State had, a, uh, I think, Richie Munoz is their quarterback. Um, I think he was a younger guy last year as well. So we'll see what those two quarterbacks are able to do for Weber State and Idaho with a, a, another year of experience under their belt. Last but not least, we have Weber State at Sac State. Weber State, once again, like I said, not so sure what to expect from them coming into the 2024 season. Um, but Sac State, I think they'll be a pretty good squad. Caden Bennett, their quarterback coming back, they have that uh, Conklin. Uh, he was a freshman last year, has another year. I don't know if they'll do the two-quarterback system, but Caden Bennett can run it. He was like... 30 yards from being their leading rush, 30 yards away from being Sac State's leading rusher last year at the quarterback position, threw for like 2,100 uh, passing yards last year as well. That's not bad at all. Um, so I think that's going to be a really good game to pay attention to. That is number 10 on our list, Weber State at Sac State going to Sacramento, California to play. Um, like I said, Weber State's got a lot of tough games on the road in 2024, but that is a game I'll be paying attention to. That is some games that I will be interested in seeing in 2024. You guys let me know if there's a game that I left off. I think I really covered some of the more top games, unless there's some surprises in the conference in terms of who's good in the conference, who's not good in the conference. Maybe some of these teams don't end up being good. Maybe some different teams that I didn't mention end up being really good, like a Portland State, like an NAU potentially. You know, there's some schools out there that could potentially shake things up this year. But these are just based on last year, what I see as being some of the bigger games in the 2024 season. You guys let me know what you guys think about that in the comments, and we will move on.